Keeper, how are you? Good. Thumbs up? Good, that was great. We gather in this place as friends, brothers, and sisters in Christ. Know that you are loved and welcome here at Hoover. Please um, refer to your bulletin for uh, all of our special announcements. We have some really good ones in there. And if you noticed, um, next to your bulletins, there was a chance to um, participate in a fundraiser that is being held at our church to benefit the playground. And um, if you're interested in helping with that, to see the, the playground come to the rich portion, um, that's an opportunity to help in that area as well. Um, awesome. All right. So as always, we are going to begin our service with a time of reflection and prayer just to um, center ourselves so we can enter into worship. So let us begin.
what time it is. It's time for the passing of the peace. Let me see who I can pick to demonstrate. Mrs. Grease, why don't you show us how to pass the peace? It's a very fun thing. You can do it with a wave. You can do it with a heart. You can do it with a hug. Some people peace sign. And but be sure to make eye contact. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. so this is <laughs> we have to make eye contact to make sure our people are good with us. So let's stand and pass. The scripture from today comes from, comes from Romans 9, verses 1 through 5. Paul says, I am speaking the, the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I wish that I could accuse myself and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises to, to them belong to patriots, and from them, according to flesh, come from the Zion, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Amen. This morning, I would like for us to take what we know as the most accepted and celebrated expressions of love and hold them in contention to what we as believers have read and studied about additional forms of love. So as I go through today's sermon, I want you to think of the times in scriptures where love was expressed in a totally different way. Can you do that for me today? Love, love, love. Be the beloved. What does love mean to you? When you think of love, what images come to mind? Maybe hugs? Kisses, gift baskets, or a bouquet of flowers, long walks on the beach, or perhaps a shiny new diamond ring. <laughs> Contrary to Tina Turner's belief that love is just a secondhand emotion, Hallmark Incorporated creates these personalized cards that puts words behind what many may say are the true feelings and expressions of love. For example, an anniversary card may read, Honey, you're my everything. The best thing that ever happened to me is you. I love you. To go along with this idea of love, television and social media outlets strengthen the case that the only true way to love is through a smile, a hug, a laugh, and a kiss. While these love buzz words and expressions 
do make us feel good. They often leave a void in our lives when they are either non-existent or unavailable. I'll give you an example. When I begin to call my grandmother, her first question to me is, Leah, don't you love me? Well, I, well of course I love you, Grandma. But my lack of expression, the time in between, caused her to doubt my love for her. In addition, this pandemic has over amplified feelings of unloved because we have to physically social distance ourselves from those who don't live with us. In turn, we are unable to connect like we used to because we have to stay six feet away. Friends are like unable to hug each other or even exchange a smile because you can't really see it. This lack of expression, this lack of love expression can be very frustrating, frustrating and perhaps lead us to believe that we are not loved, which is totally not true. It is clear that the way we know and understand love hasn't always been able to withstand the test of time. Therefore, this morning, I want to shine light on another form of love in which we as Christians ultimately subscribe to. In today's passage, we witness Paul express love in a way that would never make a hallmark call. Through the feelings of anguish and unceasing sorrow, Paul is crying out to the Lord to save the remaining Israelites who have yet to proclaim that Jesus is the Messiah. Brother Paul knew the lifelong benefits of knowing God and loving God, and he so desperately wanted the same benefits for his kindred folks. So, through anguish and sorrow, Paul cried and prayed. His deep love for his people had him so sad that he even contemplate, contemplated sacrificing his own life. Paul's passion, his drive for his fellow brothers and sisters to know and accept and to love Christ was so deep, deeper than most of us could ever Imagine such a powerful expression of love that completely contradicts everything that society tells us about how to express love. So, how do we as believers hold in contention the unpopular and perhaps unpleasant ways of love? When it comes to love, we must reckon the fact that as Christians, we celebrate a faith tradition where love is displayed in so many ways, but most often it is not with hugs and kisses. Countless Bible stories contradict the hallmark versions of love, and this is actually good news. And let me tell you why. As believers, we believe in a more solid, well-rounded version of love. We know that love has its ups and downs, so on the days when there are no hugs and kisses available, we can rest assured that we are loved because God showed his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died the beauty in today's passage reminds us that no matter what, no matter how we feel, we as believers can rest assured that through the death of Jesus Christ, we are always loved.
The last supper Jesus had with his disciples recorded on the Sabbath night, a week-long Jewish Passover celebration. And after Jesus' death and resurrection, early Christians celebrated a weekly gathering of food and fellowship they called the Agape or Love Feast, which they concluded with a brief service they called the Breaking of Bread. The only biblical account of the sacrament we now call the Eucharist, or Thanksgiving, is from the Apostle Paul, who in his instructions to Christians in Corinth says this, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord of Jesus on the night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Drink this in remembrance of me. So as we members of the Rita Church celebrate the Eucharist weekly, may we too experience the love and the thanksgiving embedded in the Last Supper and Agave Feast. The history of this important ritual view reminds us of God's love, Christ's sacrifice, our fellowship together, and our duty to serve the larger world. Let us pray. Almighty God, with your people over all the earth, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dear God, holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who by his suffering, death, and resurrection gave birth to your church and delivered us from the slavery of sin and death. And with the confidence of being your children, we lift up the prayer to you that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So joining with Christians throughout the centuries, let us partake of this transformative meal where our common lives as disciples of Christ creates true communion in spirit in this collective fever fellowship. It is a remembrance of the love, life of love and sacrifice of Christ Jesus that we offer ourselves in prayer and in thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ for us. We proclaim the mystery of our faith at God's table. Let us pray. Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered today on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Amen.
juice that is the blood of Christ shed for you. Drink this in remembrance that Christ died for our sins. May God's Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all peoples and all creatures of this earth.
In response to last week's joke, Mrs. Taylor wanted to supply you with another one, so you ready? All right. Did you hear about the hungry clock? It went back for seconds. <laughs> Thank you guys again for um, showing up this morning and practicing social distancing. As you know, there are many churches that are not in service, um, largely due to the fact that some members um, are not able to commit to being safe and practicing social distancing. So I am extremely proud of you. Um, and your discipline and your respect for each other that we're able to keep our door, doors open, okay? So bless you for that. Before us, it is blessed. Behind us, it is blessed. Below us, it is blessed. Above us, it is blessed. Around us, it is blessed as we set out with Christ. Our speech is blessed as we set out for God. With beauty before us, with beauty behind us, with beauty below us, with beauty above us, with beauty all around us, we set out for a healthy place indeed. Amen, amen, amen.